Hi, this is the first part of a two-part lesson looking at uh, another way of calculating the age of rocks and geological events. And to do this, we're going to work out um, the age of, in particular, of the Bodmin granite uh, in Cornwall. But first of all, we're going to look at uh, the techniques. So part one is about the techniques that we use. The second part of the lesson will be about the Bodmin granite itself. Now for this lesson, you need the uh, A3 handout calculating the age of the Bodmin granite. You also need the um, A5 sheet, which has got a graph, uh, also titled calculating the age of the Bodmin granite, and you need a scientific calculator. Okay. The geology of Cornwall uh, is fascinating, but one of the key features of it is the intrusion of uh, several uh, large granitic plutons, going from um, the Scilly Isles uh, in the far west, uh, beyond this map, um, through the major um, plutons of Cornwall, Land's End, Carmelis, and Austell Bodmin, uh, over the border into Devon then, uh, of the biggest one of Dartmoor. Now, to date events like this, like the intrusion of these granites, um, we use a number of techniques. We can relatively date them, looking at the rocks that they uh, cut and have metamorphosed. Or if we want more accurate data, we need to use uh, radiometric dating. Now, we've looked at radiometric dating uh, as part of the AS level. What I want to do to, uh, in this lesson is step it up a little bit. Okay, let's start with something we're familiar with, the decay rate, uh, curve, where we see the number of parent atoms decreasing by half with every half-life, the number of daughter atoms then uh, increasing correspondingly. There are some limitations to this technique. I mean, it is quite straightforward, um, but it can be limited in terms of its accuracy, particularly with elements that have a very long half lives So to get a more accurate date, we need to actually do some calculations. Okay, let's start out with um, a straightforward one. Look, using this graph, we can look at the ratio of daughter to parent atoms um, that we find within a um, particular uh, geological sample. So say, for example, we have a, a daughter to parent ratio of 20. Okay. Now, to work out how many half-lives have elapsed, we simply read across to the, the curve and down, and we can see that's uh, about 4.33 half-lives. If we know the half-life then, we can do uh, multiply it up and work out how old the, the rock is. Okay, so let's have a go at this uh, as a table. We have uh, a table here just to think about uh, this decay rate curve as uh, a number. Clearly, for the parent isotope, we start with um, 1, and the door track isotope will be 0. And we can then work out the rest of these by taking the um, parent isotope away from 1. So the first job is to complete this table on your worksheet. Have a go at that now. Okay then, let's see uh, what we've come up with for this. So if I complete this table, our parent isotopes halve every time. So if we start with one, uh, after one half-life we have half, after two half-lives we have um, a quarter, after three half-lives an eighth, four half-lives a sixteenth and so on. 
to work out the daughter, I stop. Then? We take that figure away from 1, and we end up with these numbers. To work out the daughter's parent ratio, then, simply uh, divide. Once we have that daughter-parent ratio, we can then go back to our graph, read across the graph, um, and that should match up with the number of half-lives. Okay. That's all very really well, but a little bit theoretical. That's not necessarily what we measure. Okay, so if we have a look at question two, here we've got um, samples taken from uh, a wood uh, specimen to establish carbon-14 dating. I've given you the number of parent isotopes and daughter isotopes, which is what we'd measure uh, from a mass spectrometer if we were doing this. What I'd like you to do then is calculate the ratio uh, for each of these samples. Use the graph then to work out uh, the number of half-lives. One decimal place is fine and then calculate the age of the sample. The half-life for carbon-14, if you remember, is 5,730 years. Okay, press pause now and have a go at those questions. Okay, let's see what we've come up with. These are the answers we should have come up with. So we get ages there um, running from 9,168 up to 25,785 years. That's fine. Okay. This method's okay, but we're still limited with our accuracy of plotting and reading the graph. So we need something that perhaps will give it will will just perhaps be involving calculation. Now to do this, we use uh, the decay rate equation. So this is the uh, equation that determines the um, curve of the graph that we've been looking at. Looks complicated, and it is. Uh, it's not really possible to use this comfortably um, in an exam situation. So in an exam, what we'd, um, we'd do is we rearrange that equation for you. So what we end up with is this. This is the same equation, but rearranged to make t, time, uh, the subject of the equation. Okay, Rearranging that um, uh, original equation goes beyond uh, what's required for A-level geology. You do not need to be able to do that. So now we have an equation where we have to just uh, substitute uh, numbers in. Okay, uh, ln is the natural log. That's a button on your calculator. So if you work out the um, the equation inside the brackets and then press ln on your calculator, it will give you a number. Okay. We also need to know. Um, the half-life, or we can work out the half-life. Uh, half-life is 0 0.693 over this decay constant. Uh, this is uh, a number that varies from um, isotope to isotope. You will be given this. You do not need to know this. Okay. So if we work this out for potassium-40, which is one, one of the dating methods we do need to know, um, we have uh, put our numbers into the equation, and we get an answer of about 1,255 million years as a half-life. Okay, knowing that, we can then start to work out the rest of these uh, questions. Can we work out now, for igneous rock samples, where we're using potassium argon dating, uh, the age of these three samples? And also, how many half-lives that represents. 
Press pause and have a go at that now. Okay, let's see what we've uh, come up with. If we work out our ratios for JK and L, we get these numbers. If we then put those numbers into our um, decay rate equation, we'll see ages of that sort of order. And then if we work out uh, the number of half-lives that represents, we get answers like that. Okay. Hopefully we've been able to work through uh, those equations step by step. If not, go back to the start of the video, work it through again. Because the next lesson, part two of this, is going to be to try and apply that to calculate the age of the bottom in granite and then to try and put that uh, intrusion into some type of context geologically. Okay, I'll see you then.